And and I don't want to, at this point, I don't want to say anything against Dubai. I don't want to say anything against the police station. I don't want to say anything against the rental car company. It's just, you know, at this point, I just want, you know, I feel like she's been there long enough. Um, once whatever the amount that she needs to pay is cleared, that's when I would like for this whole ordeal to come to an end. I wish she would have never went and even asked for her items back. What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to Breaking Truckers. I, I can't do it. We'll do it live. We'll do it live! Fuck it! Do it live! I, I'll write it and we'll do it live! Tina Baster in the building. <laughs> Man, uh, big ordeal for the last couple of months for you, huh? Yes, it has been um, quite a lot. It's been a lot. I I can I can understand. I I can understand. Um, so, do you have any? Do you have any update? that you can share with us pertaining to a uh, sassy situation over in Dubai right now? No more wasting time. Let's get it. Hold on. Yes, I do. We do have a final um, amount from the rental car company that um, Tierra has agreed to to pay to settle the, the claims with the car in the, the rental car company. So that was actually um settled this morning that the agreement to pay that amount was um in discussion this morning and it was actually done through the proper legal channels so um yes she has agreed that that is the amount that she will take accountability for awesome awesome so you say that was taken care of today earlier today so it hasn't been paid. It hasn't been paid, but the agreement has been locked in with right. the court system there. Okay, 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 okay. So it's so everything is moving along smoothly for her to make her return here back to the states. Um. Well, the the other side of the case still will be open, and that's still pending. Um. Pending the rental car company's decision to close their claim that they opened. So that side is still pending. And we don't have any further information um, because it's, it's just a matter of how they'll decide they want to proceed. All right. So, Ms. Baxter, um, I, I understand that, you know, you, you reached out to, you know, to the, to the media and you know, and you uh, brought on a, a community activist with you uh, to help yeah. you, to help you, you know, navigate through all of this stuff. Um, I'm, I'm just gonna, you know, I, I don't want you to take me the wrong way or anything like that because you know, I, I try to see everything with open eyes and everything. But uh, the narrative of her, uh, you know, screaming, yelling, and all like that. Um, and the narrative of what the activists put together, the reason why she was, you know, in her situation. Uh, I myself thought that if you hadn't came out in the media, maybe the, you know, maybe Tierra wouldn't have broke the internet the way it broke. Um, I can agree with you. Um, I regret, I regret, I was advised to take that route at the time based on the progress that was being made at the time. I regret ever discussing anything with the media. Um, I'm not going to go into too many details on, on the podcast. Uh, so I don't have much regret over the podcast. I've only spoken with um, you and uh, today, and there's um, Dollface, and there's one other person that 
has uh, reached out to me and I've been in communication with behind the scenes. But um, I regret the day that I actually made the first statement with the media. I wish that this would have been handled behind closed doors. I was not aware that there would be this much like negative attention associated with the case, this much backlash. I can I can see threat. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You know, this is, excuse me, a damn fine cup of coffee. I've had, I can't tell you how many cups of coffee in my life, and this, this is one of the best. I'm not experienced with, you know, this side of the world and how people receive, you know, statements on these different platforms. And I'm a very private person. I've said that a hundred times. Right. So, like I said, I, I, I don't think all of these side stories and stuff like that would have would would have manifested itself as it as it did. So, you know, I I would I feel like once I got, you know, more insight, um, as time passed, I I wish I would have fought this battle with her behind the scenes. I feel like we, the outcome would have been the same, but we on the I would never have received like the, the level of negative attention directed at me in particular, and she wouldn't have ever been judged in the court of public opinion. But me walking in blindly, thinking that I'm trying to help bring awareness for one, and I was advised that this was. Uh, the route that should be taken at the time that I made my first appearance. And yeah, I, I regret it. I, I do. I regret the first appearance or first appearance. I'm sorry. And you, and you know, don't get me wrong. No, you, you, you did good. Uh, Miss Baxter by, by bringing, uh, attention to, you know, your daughter being, you know, held overseas. Uh, you know, you went in there with a good heart. I just think maybe the narrative should have been different than what it is when y'all went into it. Maybe, maybe, uh, maybe we should have went into it with the rental car company. Uh, let's let's just let's just put it what it is. The rental car company is extorting her. You know. Pretty much. I mean, if you guys, if you guys would have went in, would have went in with that narrative, it probably would have, it probably would have played a little bit better in the media. We, I, it was, it was discussed that the rental car company would not make up their mind about the dollar amount that they wanted, but we couldn't use the word extortion in the media. So what I was able to say was very limited. And what the news was able to present was very limited. So at that time, even though we were very well aware that she had dealt with this situation where she was constantly trying to negotiate a dollar amount with this company, she wasn't running from accountability. She wasn't running, hiding from the police, she was in communication with the police, with the rental car company as often as needed. And But we couldn't just say, this is what it is. The only thing at the time we could, um, and even at this point, what they were saying is they didn't know the exact amount that they wanted her to pay. It has just been determined this morning. She was given a notice to show up for a mediation appearance two hours uh, before she needed to be there. And she went there because she's not running from accountability. But that was the first time she received an exact dollar amount through legal channels. And, and with that being set in place, you know, being that she's willing to be accountable so that this nightmare can come to an end, 
she accepted that agreement. But at, before it was like, we want this amount. No. You come with this amount and they would say, no, we don't want that. Now we want more. You go with more. And it was like, no, now we want another dollar amount. And it was just all like, it wasn't handled in the proper way. Whose idea was it for you not to say uh, extortion? Like what? Extortion was a harsh word or something? Like, was it was it the was it the activist guy that kind of kind of suggested was, that, or was well, it the news? It was, it was still it was still under investigation, and it was just advised, you know, by um, different legal professionals, you know, to okay. not. Okay, that's understandable. Not because that that could be considered considered slander. You know, if if the case wasn't you know settled yet, it could be considered slander. So it was, it was advised by, you know, proper legal advice. After all the stuff that's come out now, you know, I, I'm I'm still learning. I'm 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 learning as I go about the things that happens over in Dubai, and uh and a lot of negative aspect of of the practices that goes on over there. You know, I I come to find out that their laws is real, real tight when it comes to, you know, come to different genders, females and stuff like that. Come to find out that you certain items you can't bring into the, you know, to the country. Uh, you know, it, it's it's. Whew, it, you know, I'm I'm at the point I'm a guy and I and I know I don't want to go over there, but um after learning everything about uh, what what goes on over in uh, over in Dubai, uh, in your opinion, do you think uh, Sassy would ever make the trip back over there again? No, absolutely not. Damn good coffee and hot. Mm of course, you know, we don't need to go into all of the all of the stuff that was that's that's going on out here and everything. Um, and I, I'm just going to say it that, you know, the car rental company, you know, they 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 thought they got one, you know, they thought they can. Well, they got, you know, got what they want out of her. Um, as far as the situation that started when did you actually find out uh of the situation because now this is like what the end of july that is is being picked up and being broke i found out in in may i found out in may so um but we didn't believe that this was and i don't even think she realized the seriousness of it he thought that she could just pay them, you know, what they originally requested and it would go away. You know, the travel ban would be lifted and she would be able to travel back to the U.S. But um, actually, there were periods of time where the individual who opened the case against her left, left Dubai and went to Pakistan for three weeks. So three weeks is a long time to be, you know, sitting in limbo waiting on the next negotiation. And she was told by the police department that she had to wait for that individual to return back in order to negotiate with the rental car company to settle the case. So she was basically waiting in limbo for three and a half weeks just to renegotiate and convince them to settle, you know, or give a reasonable final amount and and bring this nightmare to an end. So it seems like it was um, a long period with no action. And all of May basically was lost due to the person who opened the case leaving Dubai for three weeks and not even being available to even negotiate. 
And it, it, the only thing really started to set in when the individual came back. Um, I believe it was late May, early June. And when the individual came back, he was asking for another amount of money, a, a different, you know, a higher amount at the time. Have Have Sassy ever done business with this particular rental car company she has before? not done business with that company before. She she never did business with that company before. So this that was her very first time doing business with them. Was the car in her name or the the person that was driving the car or her in the car? Is, her name her name is on the rental agreement. God damn, Jimmy, this some serious going made shit. Me and Vincent would have been satisfied with some freeze dried tasteless choice, right? <laughs> and he springs this serious gourmet shit on us. What flavor is this? Knock it off, Julie. But she was not the driver. She was not the driver um, at the time of the accident. And a lot of people ask, why did she leave her things in the car? Yes. I, I can answer that. I will answer that. When it happened, the I was told by Sierra that the police was maybe like, two blocks away, only a few blocks away from where the accident took place. So um, the other drivers called the police and they were on the scene pretty fast because they weren't far away from where the accident happened. And when they got there, um, the driver was asked to step out of the car and um, placed in handcuffs. She was asked to step out of the car. She thought she was just being questioned and that they would release um, the car to her and allow her to, to go but she was asked to step out of the car immediately placed in handcuffs in, in the police car so all of her items that were in the car were left in the car and she had no way of getting those items because she didn't even think that she would be brought down to the police station but um, with later uh, information, I didn't even know at that time that her name was on the rental agreement either. So I found out, you know, more recently that she was on the rental agreement, and that's the reason why she was also taken. But she was questioned, she was detained for a few hours. Ms. Baxter, let's, let's clarify this. She was not arrested, but she was detained. Right. She was upon when the accident happened, she was placed in police custody and taken to Dubai police station. She was actually in a jail cell for about three hours. She was questioned. She was held in the cell for about three hours and she was released and free to go. When she was released, was, and she had no charges pending associated with the accident. Awesome. Okay, that's 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 awesome to hear. Okay, uh, but again, she was just she was just detained, questioned, and let go. Uh, there there was there was some point that I heard that she was she was detained for like a couple of days though, right? No, it wasn't a couple of days. It was at the Actually, she's been detained under what, what's called a travel ban for a couple of months. So she cannot leave. It's not detained as far as being in a jail cell. You can be in the jail cell or you can be held under a travel ban. She's what's called held under a travel ban. So under no circumstances can she leave. It's almost maybe similar to house arrest in the U.S., but she had no no charges officially. She just has to wait out this process. Once they open, once the rental car company opened the claim against her, she had to remain there to wait the process out. And that was the the route that they take to make sure she does not leave Dubai. All right. All right, cool, awesome, awesome. At least we got, at least we got all the misconceptions cleared up. Put that coffee down. Technically, she is under 
police orders to not leave the city. That's that's understandable. Okay, cool. And cool. it's actually, you know, the grace of God that she's not in jail, you know. All right, all right, so all right. She can't just jump on a plane and, and book a flight home. All right. That's that's what's up. That's what's up. Miss Baxter, man, I you know, I'm I'm with you, you know, on all this. I'm with uh Sassy for definitely a safe return. I know how you feel about the unfortunate backlash that uh all this had uh, had preceded. Um but the bottom line is 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 you know just to get her home back safe and i'm i'm with you on that yeah and and i don't want to at this point i don't want to say anything against dubai i don't want to say anything against the police station i don't want to say anything against the rental car company it's just you know at this point i just want you know i feel like she's been there long enough um, once whatever the amount that she needs to pay is cleared, that's when I would like for this whole ordeal to come to an end. I wish she would have never went and even asked for her items back. If I if if I would have known that this would be the outcome and it would be you know this much um, chaos and associated with this case, I. I would have told, don't go, don't go there, don't ask for anything, just call it a loss, you know, don't go asking for it, but even without her items, the, the items that she had that were left in the rental car, she would not have been able to even, like, have a place to stay, eat, or come back without many of those items. Anyway, they're, they're, majority of them are, you know, needed for travel. But um, she was advised by the police department to go to the rental car company to get them to release, sign a release form to obtain her items that were left in the car. She was told that they had, um, they, the car was told back to them and they had, the, uh, only the rental car company had the authority to release her items back to her. And she was instructed to go to them. And that's the reason why she originally went to the rental car company and asked for the items that were in the car. So that's how that started. She went there. Um, she was in, they, they say invited. Invited means they welcome you to come. She contacted them and she went there, I believe, two days after the car accident. Could have been, I'm not sure if it's a day or could have been a day, could have been two. I don't want to give like the wrong timing, but I know it was very, very soon after because she wouldn't even have a place to stay without her credit card. So I believe it was the exact day after. Um, and she went there and when she went to get her items back, she was told um, that she had to pay an amount to get the items back. Right, right. Um, Ms. Baxter, uh, with all this information that's coming out uh, and all the additional information that's coming out about Dubai, have you heard of any other issues uh, or have you seen any other issues pertaining to Dubai? Because I, I came across uh, a couple of, you know, a couple of articles, a couple of videos. Um, there was this... Um, uh, students uh, that was from London, you know, they was in a similar situation as as Sassy, where they was in a accident and they was, you know, asked to pay an enormous amount, and they was, you know, they themselves was detained over there because they couldn't believe that, you know, they was in that type of situation. Have you, uh, have you, you know, seen? seen or heard or read any similar situations to your daughter right now? Yes. Um, there, are, there are many situations similar to what she went through, um, but I don't want to speak on those situations right now because I'm just trying to detach from this whole ordeal at this point and work with, you know, 
um, the rental car company to get their money so that, you know, this whole situation can come to an end. Because um, I realized that even with me speaking and trying to bring awareness that there are other individuals who have these unfortunate encounters, um, if people don't want to, to hear, then there's nothing I can do. And I don't want people, like, lashing out at me for speaking on, you know, other situations that are similar to what she experienced. Because that's what I found. I received more backlash. I've re- I received threats. Um, and I'm just tired of everything. I feel like I'm in a good space right now. And um, I protected myself from, you know, the, just protected myself from the negativity. And, you know, I I found I'm in a place of um I'm in a good space right now and I just don't want to continue like discussing like the whole ordeal and and other situations because I, I feel like it didn't like bring any type of um anything positive to the the situation. Very good, very good. Tina Baster, everybody. Um, Miss Baxter, thank you. I I do appreciate very much that you give me the opportunity to uh, speak with you. I I understand that you' about to go ahead and be ghost about everything. You're waiting on the return of your, or you waiting on the safe return of your daughter. You know, definitely. You know, my prayers is out uh, to her to to come home safe and sound and everything. And uh, I understand you guys. You know, y'all should take some time, you know, away to, you know, reset, you know, get your mind back right and everything. And, um, and uh, yeah, you know, I hope everything works out uh, for you in the future. Big cheese got it locked, boy. Want you to love me all night, yeah, take me down. Want you to make me real wet, yeah, swim around. Want you to take it like a G, yeah, don't make a sound.